Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. Today we're gonna explore the cheapest possible way for resin 3D printing by taking a look at the Spark Maker. First of all, I want to thank Banggood for sending over the machine they did provide me with this, but they have in no way paid me for my opinion whatsoever. So before I can say anything about this printer, I do have to mention the price. At 250 bucks, it is, as far as I know, the cheapest resin printer there is. And of course, if you go to the very bottom end of the price, you're not gonna get all the high-end specs. So this is not a very high resolution display that they're using here. And it's not like the highest quality components, but for 250 bucks, you can, as you can see, 3D print resin. So the unit that is actually really small, it is basically the size of my head almost. Uh, so it, you're not gonna have any problems putting it anywhere. And the build area is for this kind of printer, average at around 55 by 98 by 125 millimeters, which is pretty small. Like this Eiffel Tower used up the entire height of the build platform. And uh, this castle here basically used all the entire width. So you are rather limited in what you can print with this. But resin prints aren't about big size anyways. They are about high detail. And while this printer only has a 480p screen, so it's not very high resolution. It does still manage to create some very high detail prints. Like this print here would be just unthinkable on a FDM based printer. All the retractions that it would need to print something like this with such intricate and fine uh, pieces, it would just be impossible to do. Now if we do take a look at a shape that is a little bit smoother and less detailed then we do see that there is some serious voxeling up there. And what I mean by that is that there is almost kind of a Minecraft uh, look to it because you can actually see the individual pixels. The way this machine works is that it has a UV light on the bottom, then it has basically a screen. And the parts of the screen that are white will let through the light, just like on a regular screen, and the parts that are black don't let through light. By having lay resin over top of it with the build plate on it, the light shines through and hardens the resin. So everywhere where it is white on the screen, the resin will get hardened and everywhere where it's black, it's not gonna get hardened. So this naturally means that you can do very complicated sh shapes on the screen. However, you are limited by the res resolution of the screen, which in this case, as I said, is 480p. This then manifests in these uh, voxel effects, as you can see here. Now it depends on what model you're printing and what you kind of expectations you have if this is bothering or not. On a part like this one, where it's, uh, you have very fine details and you're not gonna notice that. Like you don't see the voxel since there is so much other detail. However, if you're printing more smooth parts, then you will notice these voxels and it will not look all that nice. Now there is a high resolution version of this printer coming, the SparkMaker Full HD with, as the name implies, a Full HD screen, which gives you almost double the resolution that will get mostly rid of uh, this voxeling effect. At the moment you can only get that through the manufacturer's website though, and I believe it's still only a pre-order. But the price is not that much more, so if you're in the market for a printer like this, you might want to take a look at the SparkMaker Full HD. But for now, let's focus on this machine, since this will uh, be ch cheaper than the Full HD version. If you take a tour around the machine, then we can see that there is only one button and no screen, no anything else. That basically means that you have to prepare your files on the SD card so that there is only one file on the SD card. By turning the button, you can move the platform up and down and then when you press the button, the print starts. There's an indication LED that shows you that it is printing and if the UV light is on or off, but there is no like progress indication whatsoever. 
So unless you note it down beforehand how long your print is going to take, you have no way of knowing how much longer that print is going to take. That is kind of a bummer, uh, since on basically all other machines there is a LCD. And even with just like a couple of LEDs that light up uh, once the print is uh, completing, would have been really easy to add that to it. But at this price point, I can't really complain about convenience features. What I can complain about, however, is that as the build plate came just in the first print, it didn't stick to it. Like the material would not stick to the build plate. And I was able to fix that quite easily by taking a really coarse sandpaper around 40 grit and sanding the bottom surface. This is going to create a lot more grip for the material to grip onto. And after I did that, it worked fine. You do have to keep in mind though that you want a rather large surface area on the first few layers. As a general rule of thumb, the first few layers should be the largest surface area of any layer. Otherwise you risk that the separation forces, because it has to separate the print from the film where the display is, every time it goes to a new layer, these forces may rip your part off of the build plate. So that's what happened on some of the first prints that I did and that's why they didn't, they didn't turn out very well. And that is still an issue uh, on more complicated prints like this Eiffel Tower. There is this little railing up here with very fine connection pieces and then a long horizontal bar. And these connection pieces, they are very, very delicate. They're only maybe like one or two pixels wide. So they're very, very weak. And what happened here is when it printed the railing, like the horizontal part, it had quite a lot of surface area that is stuck to the film layer in between. And the connection pieces just burned strong enough. So when it moved up, it left the railing on the separation layer here in between. And that's why there are only the railing posts here now. That is the case on most printers using this technology though. And it's just something that you have to keep in mind while designing your part and scaling it to the size that you want it to be. They also have a lineup of resin that you can use with this uh, printer. The software that is used to slice is open though, so you can use your own resin, which is what I did here since there were some sh shipping issues with the resin. Uh, so I just bought uh, basically the cheapest resin I could get locally. And even the cheapest resin here is still like 60 bucks. Uh, in this case for a liter or for the spark maker resin is actually even more expensive at 60 to 100 bucks depending on what kind of resin you get for only half a liter. That is around like six times as much as the cost for FDM printing. So it was just a couple of different bottles of resin you're quickly at the price of the printer itself which makes me think of uh, paper printers. Kind of similar story there. But hopefully these resins will come down in price a little bit over the time. And as with all resin printers that are rather open like this, they are messy. While printing, you have this cover over top of it to protect it from UV light and so that no dust gets in. But afterwards, you have to remove the bill plate and clean off the print. To do that, you need to use isopropyl alcohol, which is kind of messy already. And then if you get the stuff all over the place, it's very hard to clean up. And you certainly have to wear gloves, uh, otherwise your fingers are just gonna be covered in this stuff. And you can need quite a lot of isopropyl alcohol to clean it off. And then afterwards you have to cure it. You can either get a dedicated UV curing station or you can just put the print out in the sun for like an hour or so and then that will work as well. Now I don't have a curing station and it has been cloudy for the last few days so some of my prints are still a little bit soft uh, since I only just put them by the window but on a cloudy day it's not going to do all that much. So I can't really say um, too much about the resin strength yet but since it is a ge generic resin anyways, that's not really the point of this video. In conclusion though, if you just want to try out resin 3D printing and you're on a tight budget, then this is surprisingly actually a really good machine. 
Sure, it's not gonna be as good as the one from Prusa or even like a Forum Labs, but those machines are like many times as expensive. Now that's it for the review of this printer. I will probably do another video where I try to make this printer even quieter since while it is rather quiet now, especially compared to an FDM printer, the, by replacing the stepper driver with a Trinamic driver and replacing the fan with a knob to a fan, I think this printer could be almost completely silent. I'm also gonna try to build something to more easily wash and cure these parts, since that is by far the messiest part of this process. And I can now see why Prusa is pushing their CW1 cleaning station uh, together with their printer as well. So that's it for this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff down below. There's not gonna be a video next week and probably also not the week after since I'm going on vacation to, to Japan. But after that, I should be back with more videos for you. So thanks for watching and until next time.